Here's what I want to ask you about who you thought did the best during this debate. Basically, who do you think won the debate? I'm going to do it in alphabetical order, to be fair. Anyone think Doug Burgum did the best? That's zero. Anyone think Chris Christie did the best? He certainly got most of the airtime. A lot of the airtime, not most of the airtime. How about Ron DeSantis? How many of you think Ron DeSantis did the best? That's two people. How about Nikki Haley? One, two, three, four people. Asa Hutchinson? Mike Pence? Zero. Vivek Ramaswamy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tim Scott? Okay, so this panel here thinks Ramaswamy won the debate. Tell me why you think he won the debate. I was reminded of the time when Vivek was talking about the national identity situation. And uh, I know Pence brought up that uh, that wasn't really an issue, but I think it was a generational problem because Vivek understands that young folks don't really understand that people my age don't really love America. And if you don't love it, you can't protect it. And I think if we fix that problem, then people will, as a, as a natural byproduct, want to protect America and what it stands for. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, I want to thank everybody who joined me last night to live stream the Fox News GOP debate, okay? It was very entertaining, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, okay? And uh, this is my recap video. I'm probably going to do maybe a couple recap videos today of the debate uh, because there's a lot to kind of pick apart and break apart in regards to what was discussed doing that debate. But I guess the first video of the day should kind of be about, well, who won the debate? Well, besides Trump, okay, who I think won uh, the night, and I'll tell you guys why in probably another video. In regards to the debate itself, um, Bevin Ramaswamy, I think, was just absolutely a star. He was on fire the whole night, and he essentially ended Chris Christie's career on stage and it became clear as the night went on that the politicians on stage knew who the alpha dog was on stage and who is the number one enemy outside of Trump for them to try to take down. Clearly, it has become Vivek Ramaswamy. There will be a target on his back. And it is because of exchanges like this in which the politicians were asked if they would support Trump uh, if he's convicted of any of these charges that are being brought against him by the Biden DOJ or these woke DAs, would they still support Trump if he is the presidential nominee for the Republican Party? Uh, I want you to pay attention to this exchange, but also pay attention to how timid a lot of the politicians are on stage to actually come out and unequivocally support the former president of the United States against what is clearly a politically motivated uh, witch hunt. Take a look. You all signed a pledge to support the eventual Republican nominee. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. <laughs> just hold on. So just to be clear, Governor Christie, you were kind of late to the game yeah. there, but no, you raised I, your hand? No, I'm doing this. Look, <laughs> look, I'm doing this. And I know this. you didn't. Whoa, whoa. No. Come, what's and the look, what, what, look, here's the, here's the bottom line. Someone's got to stop normalizing this conduct. Okay? Now, and now whether or not, whether or not you believe that the criminal charges are right or wrong, the conduct is beneath the office of President of the United States. And, 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 you know, this is the great thing about this country. Booing is allowed, but it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. Mr. Ramaswamy, you raised your hand supporting. No. I'd like to hey. get in and respond. Let's just speak the truth, okay? President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. And Chris Christie, honest to God, your claim that Donald Trump is motivated by vengeance and grievance would be a lot more credible if your entire campaign were not based on vengeance and grievance against one man. And if people at home 
want to see a bunch of people blindly bashing Donald Trump without an iota of vision for this country. They could just change the channel to MSNBC right now. But I'm not running for president of MSNBC. I am running for president of the United States. We're skating on thin ice, and we cannot set a precedent where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents. It is wrong. We have to end the weaponization of justice in this country. 30 seconds, Governor DeSantis. Let me tell you No, no, I'm sorry. 30 seconds, Governor DeSantis. You make me laugh because... You sit, you, sit, you sit here in an answer. You sit here in an answer. Right. You sit here in an answer. Go ahead, Hold Governor on. Christie. Hold Go on, on, Governor Christie. Hold on. Well, so listen. Yeah, so that is very Ramaswamy calling out Chris Christie and his fake campaign for what it is, okay? The whole thing is essentially a crusade against Trump. He know he has no chance in hell of winning, okay? He has no chance at all of actually becoming a nominee, but he's running anyways, playing tough guy for a show on MSNBC or CNN, okay? That's what he's actually really gunning for, okay? And just like when it comes to his exchanges with Trump, uh, Chris Christie, has bitten off more than what he can chew, which is, again, a very rare thing for Chris Christie to do. Um, and he went out to Bevik Ramaswamy, and Bevik Ramaswamy destroyed him. Again, that's not the only exchange uh, in this debate between Bevik and Christie that got very, very, very heated, okay? Chris Christie also lost his cool uh, when Bevik Ramaswamy called out all the politicians on stage for being bought and paid for, which... They are, right? They are bought and paid for. And Chris Christie didn't like that. People are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of actual climate change. Governor, right, Governor right, Haley, are you the bought and paid for? Hold on, hold on. Listen, listen, listen. I've had it, no, Let, no, wait, no, hold no. on, hold I've on. I've had enough. I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like <laughs> ChatGPT standing up here. <laughs> and... The last person in one of these debates, Brett, who stood in the middle of the stage and said, what's a skinny guy with an odd last name doing up here was Barack Obama. And I'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur well, standing on stage tonight. Come over and give me a hug. <laughs> give me a hug just same, like you did to Obama. The same type of amateur. And, and you'll help elect me just like you did to Obama, too. Give me that The same hug, type of hey, amateur. Brett, Got, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so you see that you're hearing that. Okay, Chris Christie... He tried the tough guy shtick against Bevik, and clearly it didn't work, okay? Uh, I think that Chris Christie, he, he's way in over his head when it comes to trying to go out to Bevik, just like he's in over his head trying to go out to Trump. Uh, again, part of me wishes Trump was on stage to also go out to Chris Christie, but honestly, Bevik Ramaswamy basically stood up on his own, right? He didn't really need any help, anything like that. He took on all these guys, okay? And... There's a mo another moment of the debate that I want to play that I think is the reason why this guy won and what is really differentiating him from everybody else on stage, which is his uh, ability to be unafraid to say things that these other politicians won't say or uh, take positions that other politicians won't take. Like, for example, when it came to the question about whether or not uh, any one of these guys would continue to fund the war in Ukraine— um, I want you to pay attention to who says yes and who says no. Take a look. The administration is now asking Congress for $24 billion more. Regardless of that, the specific, specifics of that plan, is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, I, I would have Europe step up and do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy, you're, but you're saying you would not too, Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe do, p pull their weight. Uh, but right you would, now they're not doing you that. Would not and I think we need to like do, no to and I think our support should be contingent on them doing it. And I would have support in China uh, to be able to take uh, to be able to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you would not support an increase of funding to Ukraine. I would not. And I think that this is disastrous. 
that we are protecting against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our own southern border here in the United States of America. We are driving Russia further into China's hands. The Russia-China alliance is the single greatest threat we face, and I find it offensive that we have professional politicians on the stage that will make a pilgrimage to Kyiv, to their Pope, Zelensky, without doing the same thing for people in Maui or the south side of Chicago okay. right, or Kensington. Okay. I think on. that we have to put I'm the in. interests of Americans I mean, first, he was secure to. our own border instead of somebody else's. He was referring and the reality is, this is also how we project okay. strength and by making America strong at home. Thank you. Right. Yeah, so I'm probably going to get deeper into that exchange in another video as well, too. But just for this video, I, I want you guys to notice the same type of pattern that you saw in the first clip that you also see in the second clip, okay? When it comes to taking tough positions, Bevy Ramaswamy is the only person on stage that was willing to do so in a way that was confident. Uh, like, for example, Ron DeSantis, when asked about um, supporting Trump, he looked around on stage to see what other people would say before actually raising his hand, right? Which, I mean, shows that he's timid. He don't really know what to say, okay? He doesn't really have a real position on it. He really wants to say, no, I don't want to support the guy. That's what he really wants to say. Uh, and that showed up clear, just like in this exchange right here when we're talking about sending more money to Ukraine. Ron DeSantis, once again, being timid, he sees that Vivek raised his hand and he kind of does a halfway thing and then gives a halfway answer talking about, well, Europe needs to pull their own weight, right? Europe needs to pull their own weight, which I agree, right? I agree with, but that doesn't really have anything to do with what we're doing, whether or not we want to continue to send more money, right? And, you know, again, it's it, this is why Vivek is just, he's doing better than DeSantis, right? Or he's about to overtake DeSantis. I did a whole video yesterday responding to Ben Shapiro uh, and his analysis on why Ron DeSantis is losing, in which I, I disagree with his analysis. I think that he seems to believe that, well, it's less about what DeSantis is doing, right? Or, you know, the mistakes that he's making. And it's more about the fact that, well, Vivek is willing to say whatever, to get votes or whatever. And you know, it's funny because there's a lot of criticism of Vivek Ramaswamy and they try to make the guy seem like he's inauthentic. And I'm like, where are people getting this from? Because the guy, at least it's been documented, he's been a libertarian type since high school. And people want to criticize him for not voting. And I'm like, well, a lot of libertarian types don't vote, right? Because there aren't many libertarians that are in these national races, okay? I mean, again, that's, a normal thing, right? And, you know, he did vote for Trump. I'm trying to figure out why people think the guy is fake, okay? I mean, if anything, he has a lot more to lose by coming out here and supporting Trump and running for president and taking these positions and saying the things he's saying than he has to gain. Because the chance of him actually beating Trump is slim to none. He's coming out here saying all these things that after he finished running for president, uh, he's going to have some issues, okay? I mean, don't get me wrong. The dude is damn near a billionaire, but still, right? But still, um, it's not necessarily good for his wallet. The same way it wasn't necessarily good for Trump's wallet to run. I'm trying to figure out why people think he's inauthentic, right? I'm really trying to figure that out because just like Trump, uh, there's no real financial incentive for this guy to come out here and to say the things he's saying and to do the things he's doing considering the current political climate. There is no incentive whatsoever. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what people think that he's trying to get out of this outside of, you know, legitimately wanting to be president of the United States. Again, he's saying things on stage that, uh, you know, once he stops running, once this is done and over with, it's, it's going to follow him. OK, the, the, the powers that be aren't going to like some of the positions that he's taken. Right. But again, back to my main point in regards to that clip right there. Again, that is why Vivek is gaining steam on DeSantis. That's why he's laughing all of these guys because clearly he's smarter than all of them. Clearly, he actually has policy positions. He actually answers questions unlike all of these other guys on stage. And he's not afraid to take uh, a stance on tough questions. Right? It's really that simple. Ron DeSantis is being timid. And again, I don't think Ron DeSantis had a bad performance. 
I don't think he did anything bad. I just don't think he did anything spectacular. I don't think he did anything great. I don't think he necessarily helped himself. And the reason why is because he simply just seems like a timid politician. He seems afraid. And that is becoming more and more clear the more I see the guy on a national stage at the national level. He just doesn't seem to have the same confidence that he had when he was in his bubble in Florida, right? And that's just, I mean, that's the reality of the situation. So for people that are upset about DeSantis losing steam, again, it, it's stuff like this. <laughs> this is the reason why. I told you guys, I don't, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Ron DeSantis on issues like Ukraine is not where the base is at, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of issues with, with Ron DeSantis that are not necessarily aligned with the base, even though, again, he's been a great conservative governor. But something just tells me that when it comes to whether or not he's going to go along with the establishment, he probably will at the end of the day, right? He probably will at the end of the day. Which, I mean, hey, that's no different than most politicians, right? Again, we don't know if, if Vivek's going to go along with the establishment. We don't know. Because, I mean, again, that's why they're the establishment. But he's not doing a good job of making a case for himself that he can lead this movement into the future. He's just not not compared to Vivek Ramaswamy, that is. And moments like this are why. So, like I said, uh, Trump, I think, won tonight overall. Uh, I'll probably make a, a, another video you know, with more in-depth analysis on that. But in regards to the debate itself, Vivek definitely won. It's not even close. Anybody telling you anything different and <laughs> clearly doesn't understand uh, conservative or Republican politics, at least at the base level, and they just don't really know what to talk about, period, <laughs> right? This guy clearly won. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.